Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel, Live to Fish, Outdoor Repair. Uh, I want to welcome all the new subscribers, I appreciate you subscribing, uh, giving me those thumbs up, I really do appreciate that. Uh, stay tuned, I've got, uh, I'm back on the uh, 1984 Force, uh, the butt boat, uh, the, uh, the uh, uh, unit wouldn't shift up into reverse, and sometimes if it did go into reverse, it would, it would slip out. So we, we, I determined that the uh, it wasn't really the outboard uh, lower unit's problem, it was more related to the gearbox. Uh, the, the, uh, the gearbox shift handle uh, for the automated controls, uh, the lever was broken, uh, they were using a uh, set of vice grips to uh, shift it in and out of gear. So somebody had forced it so bad that they had broken the, uh, the armature off. So that caused the uh, cables to bend. That, you know, once that bent the cables, then it, it, it just caused it all to bind up and it really wouldn't shift well. So I'm going to be replacing the uh, gears inside the control box, the throttle assembly, um, and, I, and you'll see that. So uh, stay tuned. Previously in part one, Here's the ignition, and that's the throttle. <laughs> okay, so the throttle lever is a, actually a pair of vice grips. So, stand by. Okay, so my parts finally came in. Uh, basically, what I ordered was the, uh, the gear. Uh, these are both uh, uh, the two gears that are inside the, the uh, throttle assembly, throttle control box. Okay, this gear here, these are brand new, um, but this gear here is the uh, shifter cable, uh, it, I guess they call it a clutch, uh, clutch gear, and uh, this here is for the, um, for the throttle. Now, this has actually two teeth on it, as you can see. Now, the original, the original gear, that I pulled out of the unit is here. So you can see it's missing a tooth. So this has been creating some real problems inside that uh, control box. Uh, using too much force to uh, shift the gears and to th throttle up on the throttle up and down on the uh, motor and, and it really caused some really some real stresses that caused it to break. So um, this is the original gear. You can see that the, the teeth are pretty well nicked up here. So it was just a matter of time where this one was going to start to go anyway. So I decided I'm going to just order all new and put these in. And uh, so this should uh, really improve the uh, shifting and throttling up and down of the motor. So uh, anyway, stand by. Also, also uh, I purchased a couple of new shifter cables. This was through... Uh, Great Lakes Skipper. Um, these are generic cables, and uh, they're this is 11 foot long for this. I believe it's a 14 foot long boat, but uh, this should do it. And uh, you can see there's the part number. Got two of them, one for the uh, throttle, the other for the shift. So uh, this this should work really well. So stand by, and uh, you'll see me dismantle that uh, that control box. Okay, so you can see I've gotten the uh, control box off of the uh, boat, at least uh, four screws and pulled it off. Now the uh, shift cable is here to the left, the right one is the, uh, oh I'm sorry, no, that the, the left one is the throttle and the right one is the shift. So I just got to undo these screws, um, pull the box out, I'm going to clean it up inside, get all that grease out of there and then uh, reinstall it with new, the new cables. So stand by. Okay, I got the box all cleaned out. All the old uh, oil, grease, nasty stuff in there. Um, this is the new handle. This is actually a used handle I got off eBay, but that's the uh, appropriate one for this box. So I was able to find that. So these gears will go in. I also found the broken uh, tooth off the gear that was inside the box. So that's, uh, that's a good thing, I guess. So it won't, uh, it won't jam up anything else in there. So anyway, okay, I'm going to start reassembling. So uh, this gear went to the front. This one went to the back. They kind of went like that. Um, cables come in and they click up. So I'll, uh, 
Uh, I'll try to get, show you as I do this, but uh, depending on how easy it is to film. But anyway, the, the handle goes on the opposite side. This goes into the this goes into the handle, and that's what that's what controls the gears. So anyway, uh, stay tuned. This is the box, and the front side of the box. Cables come in on this side. Uh, the handle goes in here. It's got the notch on top so that you can read the stickers for neutral, forward, and reverse. So that would go in. Okay, so here are all my parts. This has all got to go back in. So I'm going to start by uh, installing the two gears. Um, well, actually, the the gear is here, and this is the this gear is attached to the shaft. So this gear goes to this gear. But I'm going to install those into these areas, um, putting in the appropriate uh, bushings or bearings, as they're called. Uh, it also has a spring-loaded type washer for re, you know spring retention. And then we have our handle, the bushing that goes over the handle. So that's pretty much it. So I'm gonna reassemble this thing and uh, get it back together and get it back in the boat. That, and like that. Okay, and then this. Okay, actually, this goes on first. Then this. Like that, okay. I believe this is right as well. Okay, so the gear just drops here onto the other gear where they meet up. This actually goes on over that. Okay. Now, Okay, so I've got the detent springs back in with the balls here and under here. I just had to use a screwdriver and wedge them up, you know, unspring them and then stick in the balls and reinsert them. So, um, so everything's in place. I just got to get the uh, cap on and then put the, uh, the levers on for the controls for the shifter, so for the cable. So I'm stay going tuned. To, uh remove the cables basically you just have to put push back and pull up and that frees that up same with this connection push back pull off they come right off i'll need a screwdriver for this and this and these cables will come out i'll pull them right out through here and then i'll do them across the uh, side there they're all wire tied in or secured so i'll have to pull them out and then put new ones in so stay okay, tuned. what I wanted to show you was that with the button all the way out, that's all the way out like it's supposed to be. But if you try to accelerate forward, it will only allow you to go so far in neutral, and that's the neutral uh, position. So you're revving it in neutral, and that's as far as it'll go, so you don't burn your engine up. So that's like the detent to uh, just a high rev uh, while you're warming up. When you put it back in neutral, you push in the button. Now you can accelerate all the way. And you can see that, I believe, as I accelerate it all the way, you can see that on the engine. Where this is the this is the throttle all the way engaged. So and it's out of gear, it's in the full forward gear, forward uh, position. Now I'll put it in reverse, and you can see that it goes into reverse. Okay, that's neutral. I don't want to be able to see it from here. But. Okay, and now that is in reverse. And that's full throttle reverse. And I'll take you over to the engine and you can see now this lever is completely off the neutral in reverse. And that was the problem. We were not getting this to engage fully into reverse. So now that that's happening, it'll, once we put the lower unit in, it'll allow that lower unit to fully engage in reverse. And that, that solves our problem. So I'm going to get the, when I get the impeller in the mail, I will, uh, reinstall the impeller 
and then uh, put it back together and then we'll start it up and see if we can get it to go forward and reverse. So I think that was the biggest problem. Now, the only thing I have to do now is just wire tie up everything, all the cables up, put them back. There, I've got them in position. I've just got to, I've just got to wire them up, zip tie them, and, uh, and, and it's good to go. So, um, maybe, uh, uh, when I get the impeller, I'll get that running. So that might be tomorrow. But just to do a wrap up here, um, the, uh, shift box, control box is now, it's in neutral. You can see the new end for neutral. When I when I throw it forward, that's to the stop. It only goes so far on the um, on the accelerator. So you can see it moving just slightly as I engage it. That's uh, again, it's in the neutral position, so it's not going to overrev the engine. When I put it back in neutral, it's back in neutral. I push in the button. Now I can advance it full throttle, all the way full throttle. And again, I'll actuate it so you can see it. Neutral, full throttle. Just so I'll, I'll focus on that a little bit so you can see it. Neutral, full throttle. And then as we go in reverse, let's reverse full throttle backwards. So we got full throttle backwards. And I put it in neutral, and I I uh, pull out I pull out this knob, and now I can only go so far in reverse. As you can see, only go so far. The uh, throttle will just so that it, it hits the stops on the throttle, so it doesn't over rev. So, and again, that's. Uh, full throttle in neutral and that's as that's as far as it'll rev up so anyway uh, again it's uh all been wire tied i got it all the, the two gray cables are the new ones you can see all the way around so uh hopefully that will uh that will satisfy the customer so anyway uh we'll get it running and uh, that'll be the next step check out the compression today and i also want to check out the uh uh, the thermostat. Um, this, uh, even though the, the, the pump and power was, you know, put upside down, and it may have been spinning some, hard to say, but uh, I do want to check the thermostat and make sure that it's functional. If not, get one on order and replace it. <laughs> thermostat is up here at the top. Uh, but first, I want to pull the spark plugs and do a compression check and just. You know, just see if if this overheat condition uh, did do any damage. Well, it should be okay. We saw it running yes, uh, yesterday in part one. It's actually 123, 123. So we have uh, 135 and 123. So that's not bad. That's pretty good actually, 125, 123, 135. The service manual calls out for a uh, used engine to be that's in good shape to be anywhere between 120 to an, and 140 psi on the compression. Uh, the brand a brand new motor is rated at 130 to 150 psi. So those are the specs.
You'll also notice on this page of the service manual, um, it talks about having a 10 PSI difference between cylinders is uh, the highest allowable um, amount of pressure between the cylinders, the difference between the cylinders. I uh, uh, measured about 12 PSI, um, slightly higher than the manual suggests. This could be an indication that it was overheated and that the uh, head could be warped or the head gasket could be uh, compromised. Uh, I did suggest that to the owner um, that he might want to look at that down the road if he has problems with hard starting and also with, uh, <clears throat> with um, loss of power. Hey, how you doing? Yeah, got another boat. No, it's not mine, but it's uh, it, somebody on Facebook. They, uh, they're having issues with shifting. And uh, looks to either th they we're thinking it was the lower unit. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> Bought another van. Can you can you envision live to fish outboard repair? Yeah. Yeah. I All right, that's tight. That's good. That's good. Okay. Pretty good. Almost looks brand new. I'm gonna stick that in boiling water and uh, see if it'll open up for me. The thermostat checked out okay. It started opening up just before the water boiled. So I'm guessing it's probably around 140, 150 degrees it's starting to open. Papa, hmm? let's see right here. Hmm? This is camouflage so that the ducks don't see you when you're in the boat. See, it's a duck hunting boat. They go out and they, sh they shoot ducks and then they bring them home and they clean them and eat them. <laughs> What? Is this boat clean? Huh? It's got water in it, but it's a duck hunting boat. Don't have to be clean. No, in here. Don't have to be clean. It's a bunch of guys go out duck hunting. <laughs> they bring shotguns and. Uh... Just as a side note, uh, while I'm waiting for parts, I thought I'd uh, play around with this parts motor. Uh, this 50 horse force and you can see that this motor is not stuck uh, the owner thought it was and uh, I actually did a compression reading on it as well 145 pounds in both cylinders at least the owner knows now that it's a viable power head So stay tuned for part three, and uh, you'll actually see the uh, motor running, and uh, we can verify that it does shift in and out of gear properly. Uh, I'm still waiting on the impeller to be shipped to me. It's been two weeks, and I'm still waiting on parts. So thanks for watching, and uh, don't forget to subscribe and give me a thumbs up.